What's going on everyone, Alex here and welcome back to the channel. Yes, we made it through 2020 alive. And now we are in 2021 with 2020 in like the rear view mirror, you know, it's in the, it's in the past. We're focusing on all the content that we've got in the pipeline this year, which today we're talking about the very popular, widely known Fuji X-T4. <music> So I was very lucky to get my hands on the Fuji X-T4 last weekend. A friend let me borrow it. Uh, I've always been interested in Fuji. You know, Fuji's colors have really come a long way and they're, they've got these really awesome film emulations. I'm sure everyone knows about them, but I was just really interested in trying them out and just kind of seeing what it looks like, how it performs compared to my Canon EOS R. Um, and I know they're two different cameras. I know Canon is full frame and the Fuji is APS-C, but um, I, I was just still really interested in trying it out. So the first thing on the list was grab the Fuji X-T4, the Canon EOS R, ask a friend to meet me at a location, and I just started snapping away at some photos just to kind of compare both cameras. And I, and I know it's kind of an unfair comparison because the Canon EOS R is a full frame camera and the Fuji X-T4 is, is an APS-C camera, but aside from those specs, I just kind of wanted to see how both of them performed because I've been a Canon shooter for quite a while. And I've stated in the past, I've had Sony for a brief moment and then I went back to Canon and I've just never looked back. So I was, again, I was just kind of interested, how does the Fuji perform compared to the Canon? And right off the bat, I will say, the autofocus in stills from the Fuji blows the Canon out of the water. And I was, I was like, mind blown because Canon is known for its dual pixel autofocus and amazing autofocus at that, but it just wouldn't keep up, especially in burst mode. You know, the Canon EOS R I think has seven frames per second. I think it's set, I think it's seven frames per second. And the Fuji has 15 frames per second, which <laughs> I mean, it just, and it's so quiet. When you, when you start using that, it is just so quiet, even in burst mode. But in burst mode, I had the subject walk towards me and it wasn't missing focus. It, may, it might have missed focus like once or twice, but for the most part, it kept up. But the EOS R, I was really disappointed. It, it was having trouble in burst mode as the subject was walking towards me to stay in focus. So if you need a camera that has high frame rates and stills, the Fuji's the way to go. Canon, it just couldn't keep up. Next, I wanted to see the full frame look compared to the APS-C look. I wanted to see if there was that drastic of a difference between the two because so far, I've been impressed with Fuji's autofocus speeds and, and of course the color, but on the other hand with Canon, I've always shot full frame. So I'm really used to getting that shallow depth of field with full frame and how easy it is to achieve that look. So it's, it's kind of a, man, it was tough, you know? So I wanted to see what they look like together. And this is what I got. I knew the Fuji was sharp, but I didn't know it was that sharp. I was pleasantly surprised at how sharp the Fuji was. If you pixel peep, you can't really tell right here, but I pixel peeped and I could tell that the Canon was just ever so slightly sharper. I mean, to me personally, with how sharp the Fuji was, no one's, no one's gonna tell. No one's gonna be able to tell the difference unless you're really pixel peeping, no one's gonna notice. Next, I wanted to test out the colors between the two, so I threw on a preset and the settings applied to both of them are the same. And as you see right now, that's that's what this is. That's the, the colors between the two. And you guys can let me know down in the comments below which one you prefer, but in my opinion, I prefer the Canon. The Canon looks, in my opinion, a lot better. A lot more natural, I guess. I don't know if that's the word I wanna use, but when I got done editing them, I was just like, wow, yeah, I, kind of like the color on the Canon. So I don't know. I mean, I'm. you might call me a fanboy. You might say that in the comments and you're probably right, but I'm over here, I'm trying. I'm trying to see the difference between the two, trying to test them out, trying to see if maybe I can try other cameras. And I'm not dissing the Fuji by any means. Fuji at this point, up to this point has impressed me. So. Kudos to you, Fuji. When messing around with two cameras, you better test out the ergonomics of both cameras because whichever one you decide to go with, it's, it's gotta be comfortable, you know? It's gotta be comfortable being manhandled. And if you aren't comfortable with that camera, then you're stuck with that camera for a while. And you start developing cramps when you're holding that camera. Let's say you're out on a client shoot 
your hand cramps up, you gotta take a five. Client's not happy, your hand's not happy. I'm just saying, that is a scenario that could happen. And you don't want that. So back to ergonomics. Between the two, Canon and the Fuji, which one would I go with? There are a couple differences between the two. Not much, but a couple that, that really makes me choose one over the other. And, and in this case, I'm gonna choose the Canon over the Fuji when it comes to ergonomics. Because first off, the Canon has a deeper grip. It's very comfortable to hold. Um, whereas the Fuji, yeah, that, that grip, if they just, I mean, I get it. I love the aesthetic of the Fuji. It's a very beautiful camera. But when you are holding that camera, it's, it's you gotta hold it like a, a certain way. And it's very uncomfortable. It's very uncomfortable. And the menus, between the two menus, I found Canon's menus easier to navigate than Fuji's. Um, and some of you might say, well, yeah, it's because you've owned the Canon. You're used to navigating the Canon menus. And that this was the first time navigating Fuji's menus, which, yeah, it was, it was a little difficult. But I've been able to navigate other camera menus pretty easily. So again, Fuji, I'm not gonna knock that one off too much because it was my first time using that camera and the menus, so. But I will say it could be easier, could be easier. But between the two, they both got the flip out screen, which is awesome. Um, Canon does have the mic and headphone jack built into the camera. And Fuji, they took out the headphone jack, but they added it with a dongle. I don't know what they were thinking with that, personally. On to video specs from the Fuji X-T4, and the video specs from this camera are awesome. You get everything crammed into this tiny little body. You get 4K DCI, 10-bit. You get 4K 60 frames, 10-bit. And you get 120 frames per second, full HD, with autofocus, with a slight crop, I might add, just a slight crop. Oh, man, it's just, that's very, very impressive for this tiny little camera, you know? And you get the five axis image stabilization or IBIS. Uh, this is a really awesome little run and gun video camera. And I did manage to shoot a little short to kind of show off the video features. I'll go ahead and play it for you guys right now. Took you long enough. Yeah, what, no, whoa, whoa, whoa. I would not go in there if I were you. Slow your roll, okay? Give us some time to breathe, all right? Jeez. So I wanted to film a quick little cinematic scene, if you will. I wanted to control the lighting. I wanted to control the environment. I wanted to make sure it looked tip top shape. I was using autofocus on the lens, um, just because I, again, I kind of have heard Fuji's autofocus in videos is, is pretty good. So I wanted to test that out, but I wanted to make sure. So I didn't have a wireless video monitoring system. I mean, I, I did have access to the Hollyland Mars 400S Pro, I think is what it's called. And I'll have a video on that later, so be sure to subscribe. Aside from that, I didn't I didn't have them with me, um, you know, and I and I was a one man band. Wanted to make sure this looked good. Decided to see it. Does Fuji have a wireless app? And they do. They have a wireless app, and it is absolutely garbage. It's terrible. It's so bad. Uh, it kept disconnecting. You had to like, I had to keep pressing the shutter button on the camera to activate it and. I, again, I don't know what the problem is. Canon's app is actually pretty bad and people have complained that is a terrible app. I just wasn't expecting this app to be worse. It is absolutely worse than the Canon app. I couldn't really control the settings and I could hit record, which that's really all I wanted, but it just kept disconnecting. It took like three hours to film that short you just saw because it just kept disconnecting. I had to keep reconnecting. Um, but yeah, I mean, the app, don't use it. If you're trying to use a like wireless monitoring system and you wanna use the app, oh, don't do it. Just save yourself the headache. And side note, didn't realize until after I got done shooting everything, I put it on the computer just to kind of look over the footage. I had the settings set to 4K DCI 24 frames per second. And then once you use the app and you hit record, 
For some reason, it just decides to shoot it all in 1080p at 30 frames per second. So what you saw most did it, the opening scene is 4K and the ending scene is 4K. But all the other scenes, all the other shots, 1080p, 30 frames per second. I, I was so furious. <laughs> I was so furious that this app decided to change those settings. And I don't know why, because again, with the Canon app, it doesn't change settings. You can hit record and it just records. Oh, you set your settings to 4K? I'm not gonna, not gonna change it. They need to fix that app. They need to fix something, because that was, I wasn't expecting that. So, for you guys out there watching, if you have a Fuji and you're gonna use the app, it's probably gonna change the settings on you. And if there is a setting in camera to stop that from happening, I didn't know about it. Like I said, I had it for a weekend. Um, maybe that's user error, I don't know. But if you guys couldn't tell it wasn't 4K, I mean, that's impressive. It was very sharp 1080p, I'll give it that. So will I be making my switch to Fuji? No. Did I have fun using the camera? Yeah, yeah, I had fun using it. I mean, it had its quirks here and there. Pretty much goes along with any camera, really. But overall, I had fun. I was able to realize it was not the camera for me, though, pretty quickly. And that's something I always recommend to anyone, is if you're thinking about getting a new camera, test it out, rent it. Make sure it's the right camera for you because whatever you get, you're more than likely gonna have that camera for quite a while. Because at the end of the day, these are just tools for us to further our career. And right now, I'm perfectly happy with my Canon EOS R, for stills at least. And then for video, I've got my Pocket 4K. And there really hasn't been a hybrid option out there that just checks all the boxes. So, yeah, I'm a pretty happy camper right now. Well guys, that does it for me on this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you aren't already. Tap that notification bell so you can be notified when I upload a new video. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Till next time, shoot to create.